there. All she's right. Always around. She's always around. I'm, I'm trying to, I, I don't know who she is, but she's got a voice, you know. Hello, 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 everyone out there in Facebook Live land. It is me, Susan Gerbeck, here at home in Salinas, California. <laughs> California. And I'm here with a very good friend of mine that I've known for many years, Pontus Bickman. Bookman, Bickman. Bickman. Bookman. Said. Bookman. Yeah, that's fine. That's great. Okay. Uh, hey, son, hey, son. <laughs> hey, son, hey, son, Susan. Glad to be here. And this is going to be a nice, fun conversation. You're in Malmo? Yes, I'm in Malmo, Sweden, uh, mm -hmm. the very south tip of Sweden. Now, I guess, mostly known for the bridge going over to Denmark. If, if, if anybody's seen that, that I, I look at the look of your face, uh, you haven't seen that, but the, there was a famous, uh, I guess it's a five, six years ago, there was a famous series of uh, television series called The Bridge, and it was all about solving, crime, solving crimes oh. between the two countries, because it's so easy now to, to go between Sweden and Denmark over this rather long and fancy bridge that they... I was on it, right? Yeah, yes, you have to. Yes, I think you were. That was I, I when you took the train to, to the Copenhagen Apple. Yeah. yeah. I sure, no, to the airport. No, the other way. The, the other I way, actually. From Copenhagen to Copenhagen. 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 Is that how we yeah. should say it? And um, I took it to, I spent a few hours there, Mark Edward and I, and did a lecture for your, uh, your local group. Yes, you did. That it was, was great fun. Yeah. It was great. This was now, was it two, three years ago? When was that? 2017? Could be. Yeah. Yes, that yeah. sounds right. That sounds right. Yeah. Everything kind of blurs a little bit for me. It's kind of, yeah. this is June 2020, right? Yes. Yeah. That's last I yeah. checked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have a hard time with it. So, so Pontus, tell us a little bit about <laughs> yourself. Just get that mm -hmm. out of the way for those few people out there who don't know who you are and why we okay. have, we'll talk about why we have matching shirts in a minute. <laughs> yes, yeah, we always, uh, we always call each other every morning to make sure that. <laughs> what are you uh, no. today? <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I am uh, a co-host of the podcast called The ESP. Uh, it's the European Skeptics Podcast that I am uh, running together with Andras and until very uh, recently together with Jelena. We can come back to that. Um, but the, the, we are talking every week about what's happening, what's, what's in the skeptical news around Europe. Uh, and we come from different backgrounds. Uh, Jelena uh, is uh, Russian speaking, coming from Latvia. She lived in London when we started this. And uh, Andras is from Hungary. So he can cover that part of Europe, sort of, and me, the Swedes, can talk about the Nordic countries. But we also, we get, we have hosts, oh, sorry, we have guests, we have uh, in interviews, and we have, we also, Google Translate is good. We can follow the news in many countries, in many languages. Andras, for one, speaks very good Italian. I know a little uh, French and a little Spanish. So we, we can, we can uh, cover, well, we would do what we can to cover the European skeptical arena, talking about events coming up, uh, the European uh, Skeptics Congress, which we also visit to, uh, visited, and you were there as well, um, Susan. And uh, so that, that's one part of it. Uh, that doesn't explain the shows. Um, I, I am also, at the moment, uh, president of the Swedish Skeptics Society. And this uh, is their- Chairman or chairperson. Yeah, chairperson, yes. President sounds better. <laughs> uh, well, no, not right now. Indeed, president indeed. doesn't be- <laughs> anyone, Anybody can be a president, president nowadays, that, that's right. So anyway, that means, uh, sorry, jag er skeptisk. Say after me, jag er skeptisk. Jag er skeptisk. Oh, good enough. I am skeptical. And then it's, we have our logo on the back. Yeah, on the I back. think mine. Yeah, right. There we go. V-O-F, that's the abbreviation. I won't have you pronounce the, no, the please, Swedish name you. of the organization. How do you say it? Wetenskap och folkbildning. That's why I the name of the organization. It means brilliant? science and popular education. So it's about spreading scientific things. So it doesn't say skepticism in the 
name doesn't, of the group? No, the group, well, the, the organization probably would have had that if it was created today, but it was created in 1982. So it's been around for a long time. And uh, uh, I guess the founders were, well, or maybe the word wasn't as, uh, didn't have that, uh, it wasn't established as it is uh, now, at least not in Sweden. So they, they chose a more neutral name, science and popular education. But we do call ourselves the Swedish skeptics. Mm -hmm. We don't translate the, 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 the name there. So. I think VOF is a nice logo too, the way it looks yeah. and everything. Yes. Kind of uh, Richard Saunders suggested it, you should pronounce it woof. But uh, <laughs> I, I, I voted that down. I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> Oof, like 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 a dog, right? So uh, I like yeah. that. Yeah, that's kind of nice. Skeptical skeptical bulldogs of Sweden. Yeah, maybe maybe we can do something about that. that I kind of like that. I kind of like that. Yeah, yeah. They're asking about your aurora boreal aurora oh, yeah. borealis behind you. No, that's that that's is just, happening in Sweden these days. Absolutely. That this is my window. So this <laughs> is how it, this is how it looks. So all the time, it's very annoying. You can't. It's too dark to to see to drive in, but it's still pretty, and you get distracted. Uh, no, it's it's a built in um, a built in uh, effect. But in, do you uh, do you have them up there that far north? I have never seen a real oh. <laughs> one, oh. and I really last year, I I may I, we did actually with the skeptics, a couple of us, we went up to the north, and we were. Because it, they, it, we, you rarely see them down here, mm -hmm. and in the in mid of uh, middle of the winter, and uh, we stay there for uh, three days doing very interesting stuff, and and so. But we also wanted to see this, but uh, yeah, it was cloudy. <laughs> so what do you do? <laughs> I, I, it's amazing, but you know, there's a lot of people who are geographically challenged, including myself, <laughs> except that I've been there, that mm -hmm. aren't quite sure where things are in relation to other things. And so you're a little too far south. You're, yes. you're closer to Denmark than you are to the greater mm -hmm. part of Sweden. Is that I'm right? Clo I'm closer to Rome than to the north, uh, the very north <laughs> tip of Sweden. Closer to Rome? Yes. Which sounds crazy, but you can look it up. I gotta on look map. at that. That's yeah, a, yeah. That's yeah. yeah, you're right to be skeptical, Susan. That's what you should be. But um, I'm told that that's what it is. Rome. It's L A M A L M O Malmo, Sweden. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let's look and see. <laughs> that could be a nice trivia question for anybody who's painting. Mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. And not now because I spoil it. But I'll have to wait. There's Copenhagen. There's sound as well. Yeah, there's an interesting sound. <laughs> I'm looking. Oh, oh, huh? oh, okay, I see. So, so oh, if you is. look at Sweden on a map, it's it's very long, very f from north to south. Let me screen and share this here for a second and see, yeah. so people can see what I'm looking at here. Yeah, good, because then I can see it too. <laughs> so I don't say something sure. stupid, but... but um, Okay, so here's what we're looking at here, you guys. Here's here's England, Ireland, Germany, Poland, uh, mm -hmm. Norway. Here's mm -hmm. Stockholm and Sweden. Yeah. So when Mark and I went over in 2017 to go do the About Time tour, we flew into Oslo, and then we went over to Stockholm and gave right. a talk. Well, we gave a talk in Oslo, then we gave a talk in Stockholm. Then we went to Copen Copenhagen. Yeah. And then we went to, oh, there it is. Then we went to Malmo. So this is Denmark. Yes. And this is Sweden. So you're very right. close to, to Denmark. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, so, okay, so how are you closer to Rome? So if you zoom out even more, then you'll see that Sweden never stops, really. It just goes on and on to the north. There you go. Oh. So, so it's actually closer to Rome. You can There's see that on this here. picture, then to the very tip, and um, so so that's interesting. That's way down here. Okay, I see. So Sweden, look how long that is. So here's where you would see more of the or bor aurora borealis is up in here, mm -hmm, this, mm -hmm. this area. So way down here, you're you're almost equal with um, Scotland. 
Yes, right. That's true. Lithuania, Poland. Okay, that's that's interesting. See, everybody at the geography today. I hope kids yeah. at home are paying attention. We are all for uh, le learning a new stuff and uh, education. That was yeah. So yeah, I didn't realize how close you were to um, geographically uh, to uh, Scotland. Yeah. Same weather. But, but not really. I think their weather is worse than ours. <laughs> I, I love Scotland. My apologies to, to any, Scotland. any Scottish people. I love people. that grey weather. I absolutely adore I it. I do too. Uh, I have uh, I've actually not been to Scotland. I've been to the north of England only. But I, I, it's on my uh, to-do list, on my bucket list. So, so when we do another tour, you come over. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I'll be fine. We'll do it. Yeah. We'll do it. Um, We'll, we'll do the Scotland thing. Mark and I were there last April. Oh my gosh, it feels like five or six years ago, but it was mm -hmm. just this last April. We were in England and Scotland for a month in Wales. Mm -hmm. And I, this, whole, this, this, this lockdown has really just changed things so much. So let's mm -hmm. talk about that because Sweden <laughs> is in the yeah. news a lot. Now I listened to the yeah. The ESP, we call it the real ESP podcast, is mm -hmm. podcast, and mm -hmm. it's it's great. And you have a segment in there where you know you guys you talk go. about the news and what's going on. The real ESP, there you go. Mm -hmm. And um, Sweden has had a different approach to how to handle the COVID nineteen yes. lockdowns and everything than most of Scandinavia and Europe as well and mm -hmm. when i hear you talk about it on the esp i'm understanding a lot better i'm getting the mm -hmm. you know i'm understanding so could you explain what's going on because the alt-right here in america is really into sweden right now and <laughs> that's a first best. that's a first <laughs> socialistic country as we are yeah so, uh, yeah oh, i don't think they get it I should say. They, they they told something. No. no so the rules are um, much looser, so there are some restrictions. There are um, you can't have um, gatherings of more than forty-nine people, mm -hmm. so fifty is the, the, the which is very high still. There mm -hmm. are lots of recommendations. You should never you sh you're not allowed to visit your your elderly at the retirement homes, for instance, and the, there are different things. But schools have been kept open, shops have been kept open. A football season has closed. There was uh, now, I think they're opening again. So there's been some, some restrictions, but not at all as hard as in the rest of Europe. And uh, why that is, is probably because of the authorities uh, having a very strong opinion about this. It is to, as far as I can understand it, they are very science-based. It's evidence-based, science-based. They're not letting themselves being uh, bullied by, by propaganda or uh, false rumors, changing the rules every day just to please everybody. They are, no, we're doing it our way. This is what we know. This is what we believe in. This is what works, what we think will work. They're also quite open uh, for being, I think, compared to other uh, authorities in other countries, they were quite open. Said, we don't know exactly. We are just doing what we think makes more sense. This is the data we are basing our decisions on. We don't care what the, uh, the rest of the world is saying about this. We have expertise, we have, uh, and, and this is what we think will be enough to, to do. So, uh, when then, then the big question is, does it work? Yeah, and that's, that's the, the question. Is it and I say, and still, after so many months, I will have to say, maybe, perhaps. We, it's, still, it's still not true. We don't know, uh, in a way. Because certain parts of the country, especially around Stockholm, the capital, has been, that has been hit very hard, especially when it comes to the elderly. Uh, especially in the retirement homes. I mentioned those already, but even though people have not been allowed to visit for quite a while, somehow the, the, the virus has found its way into many retirement homes, and that is very, very bad. 
uh, these people are very vulnerable for that and a lot of people who have died have died uh, in the elder uh, in, in the retirement zones apart from that i think we've been very we've, we've done very well and i actually looked at the very southern we just saw the the map of Sweden. Mm -hmm. We don't have to bring it up again. But the very tip, so, southern tip of Sweden is um, the, Sweden is divided into 25 regions or, or counties. And the very southernmost one has lower excess deaths, or actually negative excess deaths in this year. Negative than deaths? They're bringing people back well, to life? No, 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 I'm not saying that right. But you know what? Uh, wow. we, have, we have fewer deaths. Than, than normal, which probably is because of the restrictions that we have imposed and combined with that the virus hasn't really gotten here for some reason that I don't know if anybody knows. So we are doing better than usual this year in terms of deaths in, in the southern, in southern Sweden. Uh, and you know, it, because if you start washing your hands and you don't visit your elderly and you, you take precautions, you also stop spreading other uh, diseases like the, the normal flu mm -hmm. and, and what, everything else that can happen. So it, for us in, the, in South of Sweden, it has definitely worked. We are very lucky. Uh, and uh, as I said, in Stockholm, it hasn't worked so well. And the question is why? Uh, and I don't know. That's why I said I, we, I don't know if we'll ever find out exactly. This, because this is a one-off. You can't make a double-blind uh, experiment of this. It is Sweden 2020 and we only can take one route at a time. And we will never know what had happened if we had been harsher or if we had been even more lenient. I, I don't know. But what bugs me a lot is that a lot of the data that is published abroad is technically correct, but used in examples totally uh, in, in totally the wrong way in, in many cases. So one thing is uh, uh, that I've talked on on the ESP as well is that Sweden is very very good at keeping statistics, <laughs> and there is no. Oh, or yeah, I shouldn't are. say there's no, yeah. there's very little corruption in Sweden. There's very little uh, tradition of covering things up. So we're reporting every case of Corona, every case, every death from, uh, from COVID-19 is reported as accurately as, as possible. And uh, there is an excess death in Sweden as a whole. Mm -hmm. And from the official numbers, you can you can explain that to more than 80% by, by just counting the number of COVID-19 deaths. So pr probably the rest of the excess deaths is also, um, also due to, to uh, COVID-19, but it's hard to say. But when you can say this is a COVID-19 death, then it's re registered correctly. Mm -hmm. In um, in Italy, it's less than, no, what was it? Sorry, it's, I think it's Spain. In Spain, it's less than 60% that can be explained by COVID-19. So either there's been another plague in Spain that we are not, <laughs> haven't heard about, or oh, Lord. See, at collecting the statistics. And, and for Spain, actually, for 12 days, they stopped reporting any numbers because the numbers were, were not believable. And I don't think they're malicious. I think it's just that they are not they haven't been able to do it they are not they haven't had the resources in place to do it correctly so so but so when you then compare other countries death rates or deaths from covid nineteen in com, in com, compare it to the population there and then you compare it with Sweden Sweden looks very bad, but it could also be that we're just much better at documenting what's happening. Yeah, there's so much more behind that we need to know, you know, that mm -hmm. I think it's much more interesting whenever you explain it, because you explain this on the ESP, mm -hmm. you know, it seems like, okay, well, Sweden, you look at these videos of them in the news, and they're just people are outside eating and, yes. and it just looks really open. I yeah. think, um, I remember you saying 
about opening the schools, mm -hmm. said, well, they're not affecting the people in rest homes. And I guess in a way that's true, except that people who are in rest homes are working, they have people who work there who have children in school. So the right. people who are, assist, you know, right. employees of a rest home mm. are. So that means children. you have to that's have. The, might be where yeah. they're pulling it in from. Yeah, so that's where we do have, um, we have, you have to have very clear rules about people working with the elderly. If you are, at l if you have the smallest sign of not being well, you have to stay home. That's your, you, you're counted as sick, even if you only got the, the sniffles or whatever, you don't get to work that day. And in Sweden that works, uh, because we have a very good social security network in place. If, you're, if you can't work, then you get your, if there's a mandatory public insurance that covers that. You don't, I think one or two days has been in the past on your own cost, but they have changed that now because of the pandemic. So, so you, you're covered, maybe not 100% of your salary, but like 80 or something. So it's not a disaster if you have to stay at home. It is hard, of course, for the poor guys who are healthy and have to work because they have to cover for you. Mm -hmm. So a lot of health workers, this goes for, for hospitals as well, are very, very tired by now because oh, yeah. they have been working extremely hard. And, uh, and uh, that's tough. And uh, so that's I don't know what to do about that, but uh, it's been tough. But it's not a big problem for a, p a Swedish pers person to call in sick. You, you're not forced to work every day just to pay the rent. You can, okay, I am a little, especially now when they say, if, you're, if you don't feel well, you have to stay at home. So then there's no social pressure on you either to, you don't, nobody looks funny at you. No, no. This is the, these are the rules now. I have to stay at home. So are you wearing uh, masks? We ha that's another uh, discussion. I, I don't know where I stand there. Uh, there's no, people are not. So the short answer is no. And that is because the health authorities has said that using a mask in a, a correct way, is so difficult. Uh, you, you tend to, to touch it all the time, you take it off, you take, but you just ruin the whole idea by doing that. So we don't see that there's any major benefit. Do it if you want to, is what they say, but we don't, think, we don't think it'll help. If they are right on that, I, I don't know. Well, you're in a, a little bubble area there that it's not so bad. I mean, let's say, Pontus, we beam you into some of the southern states that are having outbreaks right now yeah. in America, I bet you put on a mask pretty damn quick <laughs> because yeah. it's really infectious out here. And it's, it's kind of, it's not to protect you, it's protect the other person. Right. And, it, and really it's a, it's a social construct, I think. It's more of a social, I'm protecting you. You protect me. I, it's, mm. it's a way of saying, I'm taking this seriously. Right. I'm washing my hands. I'm keeping a social distance from you. Yes, it's extremely inconvenient to wear a mask and it fogs up my glasses and it's a pain in the ass. Yeah. But I'm doing it because I'm taking this seriously. And if you want to be near me, <clears throat> you know, for whatever, if you're helping getting your groceries or, or whatever, yeah. you know that I'm probably a person that, is um you know okay safe yeah it's Whereas a it's a signal saying i'm a response no i'm a responsible person i'm doing what yeah so but i can really what, what I, I, can. I can yeah i, I, I think that's I, what it is more than necessarily it is going to protect you from covid which we yeah. still think that's kind of you know like with washing hands and keeping distance it's all we can really do here in america mm -hmm. you know, stay home I, of course and socially distance and stay outside if you're going to be around people, but it's yeah. pretty scary in America right now. Put it that way. <laughs> yes. And you have a lot of people who are not, who do not want to comply. And partly I, aggressively I, 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 so 
Yes, and, and partly, of course, is because it's their livelihood. They can't if they can't work, they don't eat. If some for some people, that it's like that. Mm. And I understand that you react differently then. The other thing I think is that in Sweden we are very good to do what we're told. So if if I'm I'm sure if if they would talk, tell us you have to use a mask, everybody would do it. Nobody would complain. So. That's also why some countries have, in, have uh, introduced fines and stuff to really laws to make you comply. But in Sweden, that is not necessary. I think people are doing, you, you can see if you go to the grocery store, there are marks at the, at the, at the floor say this is two meters, don't stand, you know, keep your distance, blah, blah. And everybody complies. And at some stores even, uh, just, you can't, we, we can't let, too many people into the store at the same time. So you have to form a line outside and wait. And people do that. Nobody complains about that. Everybody's just doing what they're being told. Your and that's interesting. vaccination rates are good too, right? Vaccination rates are good. Unfortunately, we don't have a COVID-19 vaccine oh, but yet. But people do what they're told necessarily. I mean, I'm sure right. the anti-vaccine movement's moving in as it is everywhere, but it's yes. people are told to get vaccinated. They go yes. get vaccinated. So I, we, I think on, with measles, which is not mandatory to, to get vaccination, uh, I think the cover, uh, the vaccination rate is 97%. So uh, people do what they're told. And that's interesting. I, if I was an expert in, uh, in these matters, sociology or whatever the field is, it would be very interesting to see why why Swedes are so good at the you know almost like you could be accused of being a sheeple right you do whatever whatever if they say jump you jump and um, the only guess I can say is that we haven't been in a war for a long long time first of all we haven't had we actually stayed out uh, not proudly uh, I think we can sh be ashamed of that but we managed to to, to uh, flirt a little bit with uh, the Germans. So we weren't in the, in the Second World War, we weren't in the First World War. Um, and um, so we have had very stable governments. We've had a, a gradual transition in from, from you know, the king deciding everything un until real democracy. It took 200 years or so of slow change without any revolutions, the, the government has slowly become more so about in the early 1900s about 100 years ago uh, actually i think it is the 100 100 years this year since women got got, got the voting rights which was upon time but still it's 100 <laughs> years ago and uh, so um people people trust the government because the government hasn't done anything malicious for a long 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 time so i think that's part of it there might be other explanations so it's always as usual more complicated than it seems it is I'm when people sure throw out is. these numbers well sweden's not you know doing this yeah you know? and you guys are very closely watching and monitoring mm -hmm. you're also a, a society and i guess this is true for all of uh, all of Scandinavia, you tend to be healthier. Uh, mm -hmm. You have universal health care, so you have less people like here in America that are uh, diabetic and, and mm -hmm. overweight and have asthma and have pre existing conditions that would make it even worse to have it. So your lifestyle is, from what I understand, is much more outdoorsy, exercising mm -hmm. kind of thing. That's what I, that's just I anecdotally what I saw is that people are very fit. They eat well, mm -hmm. you get regular checkups, medical checkups, um, yes. you know. Yeah. So, so you know, it, it, you can't compare Sweden to America. Let's just take that off the plate. You just yes, can't do right. it. It's, it's, no. it's, it's and also uh, within America, there are, there, are there, are ma there are many Americas as well, because there, you have different states with, with different cultures and different uh, traditions. You, you know, overall, of course, you do lack uh the universal health care so yeah. that that's bad everywhere yeah um and also also there's there's also security social security if you lose your job that's not the end of the world you you can get by 
easily for a year or more before you before it becomes a problem right you, you're supposed to of course and you have to it, it you're, you're, you need to actively search for a job immediately, otherwise you're not covered. But if, as long as you're trying to get a job, you can do that for, for quite a long time before mm -hmm. it becomes a, an economic problem for you. You commies. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Please, please take over. <laughs> can you buy America? Right. <laughs> uh, no, I don't think so, but I'll, 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 I, I will, I'll, I'll check with my bank you, you, you check okay well you know what i mean so let's mm -hmm. move on because i this yeah i'm just fascinated by this whole this whole concept let's see let me take a glance over here over on the um the side here where people are may or may not be talking mm -hmm. oh frida there we go oh that's my daughter your, is it your daughter yes oh fantastic i've never met your children mm. no they're grown-ups it doesn't equate benefits either. If the mask isn't cleaned to replace properly and regularly, it could just as well help spread disease. Ah, very possible. There you go. She you know, put so it better than I did. With masks, you know, there's a whole lot. But let me tell you, if it's all you have, other than washing your hands, staying home, and keeping distance, and you're in a pandemic like we are here, it, your attitude will change really quickly about your word right. in the dark. No, yeah. even, even if you're like this. <laughs> yeah, that, that, I don't anything is better or I should say yeah. like this I'm seeing people who are wearing their mask and they're wearing it under their face like this in their mouth and their nose is exposed it's like just take the mask off it's, <laughs> you're doing nothing right that is that's another reason not to have mandatory masks people don't know how to use it and also that they may get a false sense of security if they if they think they're protected by this they may do other things that they shouldn't do yeah, Denmark, uh, Klaus is saying in Denmark, they haven't used masks either. And we are definitely over the first wave and we've gotten off much better than Sweden. That is true. Uh, if you just look at the, the number of deaths, they have gotten, they are better off. Not, I think, better off than my, my South part of Sweden, but uh, as a country, yeah, yeah. But as a country, they are. I don't know why that, why that is. Well, you know, we also have to keep remembering that, you know, it's a contagious, obviously fairly contagious, but we're talking about deaths and you're less likely, as I said before, you're less, your death rate should be lower in the Scandinavian countries just because people are, have less pre-existing conditions than they have in the United States. You have universal health care, right. people are taken care of year round. Um, you know, you have, you can take time off of work if you're, if you're not feeling well, whereas in America, it's completely different. So the death rates are higher in America and also, you know, I guess probably places that, that, uh, like third world countries, because we don't have the great healthcare system just normally and a, and a, a healthy lifestyle. So actually, yes, your death right. rates probably are pretty low compared to if you were to compare, if there was a way of comparing United States deaths to Swedish deaths, if you, sure I have you, a I have a chart here I can uh, that I look uh, that I'm looking at, but the the data the chart is only as good as the data that's reported, right? And right now uh, the U.S. and Sweden is roughly the same if you look at number of deaths per million inhabitants. Really. No, that's fine uh, with me. From official numbers. Oh. So you have to f remember, are America reporting their numbers as, as thoroughly as Sweden do? I don't think so. I can't prove that it's not that, but, but I, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Actually, can I share my screen? Is yeah, that of course, possible? go for it. Uh, maybe I'll move it over here. Ba -ba -bum. Because this is a... This is a um, a chart that I think is fairly interesting in all its inaccuracies and it's too small to to see I realize now but the big oh shouldn't move my mouse over there but the big bump in the they, these are different countries uh, and it compares uh, COVID-19 deaths per million inhabitants the big bump there in the middle is actually Belgium they were at one point uh, at an average of almost 30 people per million per day. 
and uh, that was huge. Uh, Sweden, uh, here at where we are now, everybody seems to be stabilizing a little bit now. Spain numbers, as I, we talked about that already, they are crazy because for a while they were actually reporting negative numbers. Probably they, they revised old numbers and it became in, reported in the wrong week or something. And then they for 12 days, they didn't report anything. And now they're back at the top, actually. But if you look here, I don't know if you can see it, but United States is here. Oh, that's a good way of looking at it. United States is here. Sweden is here. But um, and then let's look at Belgium. That's Belgium. That's crazy. Italy was there. Yeah, so it's it's a good. It's an I would say it's an interesting uh, chart to look at, but don't trust it too much because it it's built on official reported statistics and it's only as good as those statistics are. Right. So tell me, are you guys having a surge in uh, the pseudoscience of? Uh... You know, people are afraid. People don't understand science necessarily, at least here. We're pretty illiterate here in America, science people, literacy. Yeah. How about you guys? Are you having a lot of problems with pseudoscience? There, there is a bit. COVID yes. or, or other. What is, what is the local pseudoscience for, um, for Sweden? Oh, um, anthroposophy, I think. Um, what? What is that? <laughs> Never it's, do, do, have you heard of Steiner schools or Waldorf schools? Oh, Ward Waldorf. Yeah, we have. Yeah, okay. Those. It's a school. Yeah. It's Same. A elementary school on it. I right. Guess. It's a. It's a. It's a philosophy in how to to a better way of of teaching uh, children, which is built a lot of around superstition and angels and, and other stuff. The same guy who did that. He he invented not just those Waldorf schools, but also anthroposophy, which was his version. It, it's hard to be very, uh, this is not accurate, but I think of it as his version of homeopathy in a way. Hmm. Uh, although he r rarely, uh, it, it, he took some parts of homeopathy, some parts of what he felt was good and some things that he dreamt up and he created his own way of <laughs> Possibly really people. did dream it. <laughs> yeah, it, yes, very, very likely. And uh, it's big in, uh, in Germany and for some reason it also took hold in Sweden rather late I think after the 60s it sort of came out of the hippie wave for, for Sweden for some reason you know, it's back to nature uh, natural remedies blah 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 uh, they the anthroposophs they, it's fun it's hard to say even uh, yeah. anthroposophy I can't say it uh, I'm allergic to the word. They uh, managed to get an exception for a hospital, an anthroposophic hospital or clinic just south of Stockholm. Uh, they started it in the early 90s or late 80s, and then they got an exception. They, so as long as the healthcare providers at the hospital had MD, really real MD degrees as well, so they were uh, doctors, real doctors, they were allowed to also use anthroposophic remedies. Interesting. Uh, which is nonsense. I have talked to a nurse who worked there for a while. He, he, he just got out of, uh, not nursing school, what do you call it? <laughs> uh, and and he, it was his first job. So he was there. He didn't really know what it was all about. And he told me he they had to um, stir, they had, they, they made this, own concoctions or and and they had to stir it you know uh, oh, seven like times to the right and seven times yeah, yeah and, 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 and the the moon is very important in in what kind of treatment you give people so it's crazy so that's uh, that's a sort of a spe speciality but we had a win last year because the the um, after many many years of of discussions the the government removed the exception so they could not use that anymore. So last year in August, they closed down the hospital, which was yay. That's wonderful. Yeah, that was good. So that, that's a specialty we have. Uh, homeopathy is not a thing in, in Sweden, strangely enough. That is strange. 
yeah, some somebody needs to wear a mask. I think somebody needs to wear a mask. <laughs> Did you hear that, Mark? I do. <laughs> we're, we're not going anywhere. I no, go to the good. grocery store, and that's about it. Oh, should I? Here. How much time do we have? I have an I, I have a I have an anecdote about why homeopathy. You got my afternoon. Go oh, for good. It. Uh, so. And this is something I hadn't heard of uh, until just two or three years ago. In, in the sixth, no, sorry, after the war, after the Second World War, homeopathy made a comeback in Sweden during the 40s and the 50s and became very popular. It hadn't been before, but it came as a surge. And then in 1954, I believe it was, early 1950s, there was a scandal. One of the homeopathic um, producers, producers of homeopathic pills, uh, accused the, 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 the big leading producers of cheating, saying they're not even doing this hocus pocus with their, pill, uh, their pills, they're just ordering sugar pills from a candy factory. And, and labeling them and then saying so they weren't even putting they were not, weren't even pretending weren't even pretending to do the, the thing and so they they uh, called the police on them because their competitors were not complying with the with the rules right and then there was a very very public uh, and lengthy um, trial which was followed by all the papers about this and amazingly the best defense they could think up because it was true they were not really doing this they were just buying wow. candy pills and the, the best defense they could come up with was it doesn't really matter because everybody knows that homeopathy doesn't work anyway wow <laughs> so that's why it's not fraud that's why they, we're not we're not defrauding anybody because oh, everybody knows wow. it's, it's bogus anyway and that got so much publicity that basically the homeopathic market in Sweden just died because nobody wanted to buy them anyway. So, so, so uh, there, is a, there are a few cranks, I could name a few if I was in the mood, but I won't, uh, uh, who are promoting homeopathy in Sweden, but they are very small and um, it never really recovered after that scandal. Uh, that is a really good anecdote. I'm glad you said that. I wish we could spread that all over. I guess it'd be like, people who are defrauded by psychics or, or ghost mm -hmm. hunters or whatever, and they'd say, yes. well, you know this isn't real anyway, so y you know that this is entertainment. I mean, how, you know, of course, yes. if you want to hand me money, it's because you wanted to be entertained, not because right. you actually thought we were, uh, yeah. we're going to exercise your house from demons right. or something, because that's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, but that, that, that defense doesn't work with medical, uh, yeah. in the medical uh, world. So, but we do have a, I, I can name a few. You asked if there were some uh, cranks or, or uh, pseudoscience coming up. There's been a few. There was one uh, doctor, MD, oh, uh, called Annika Dahlstrom, and she was already very well known by us uh, in the skeptical movement. We gave we were her talking the- talking about this in ESP just recently. Yes, I, I did. Uh -huh. um, so she got the Confounder of the Year award. And I like that, Confounder. Or misleader, or whatever you want to translate it as. Uh, she was, um, she has during the spring, she's now retired, but she has on her webpage and, and to a, a circle of friends and friends, friends, etc., spread uh, misinformation about uh, colloidal silver and. Uh, if you only keep the right diet, the, the, the COVID-19 can't get you and things like that. And she, but she still had her medical license and that was revoked. So that's yeah, just that's recently, good. right? Yeah, just uh, a, a couple of weeks ago. I'm gonna look and see if she has a Wikipedia page. A-N-N-I-K-A, Annika, what was the yeah. last name? D-A-H-L-S-T-R. Oh gosh, there's a page. I yeah. Think. I think I just saw it. Annika, D A L D A H L S T R O M. D A H L. So the A is before the H. D A H L S T R O M. Annika. Yes. No, 
sorry, she is she Dol Dolkvist. Sorry, I'm, I'm saying it wrong. Hang on. I'll, I'll, okay, I think I'll get I found it. Her. A Swedish physician and professor of history and his neurology at the Department of Medical Chemistry and Cell Biology. Her most uh, cited paper no. is evidence for the existence of monocrane containing neurons in the central nervous system, was cited over 5,000 times. This no, sorry, sorry, sorry. That's the wrong person. I'm sorry. Ooh, this one is okay. <laughs> Yeah, this one is probably okay. Yes, uh, I'm saying the wrong name. Oh, I thought you'd said Annika. No, she, yes, Annika is right, but the, the last name was wrong. Sorry, um, I don't want to defame anybody who doesn't deserve it. Uh, she doesn't have a, a, a wiki page, the one I'm thinking of. What was that, Susan? Did you just throw something at me? <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, you can hear this? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> sorry, she does. Okay, sorry for the confusion. Uh -huh. She does have a wiki page. What is it called? Uh, what is her name? I will post it in the okay. chat so you can just click on it. And that's because I said the name wrong. There's the link to the wiki page, the Swedish wiki page. I'm not seeing it. Oh, there's a chat. Hmm. I'm afraid to click on it. Okay, here we go. Yeah, Annika Dahlqvist is her name. All right, I'll get out of here. D-A-H-L-Q-V-I-S-T. Um, nope, I'm, I'll have to, oh, it's in Swedish. Yes, she doesn't okay, have an so English. No, no. Okay, yeah, I was looking yeah, at no. English. No. Okay, I got it. I got it. Okay, so right. very good. Speaking of Wikipedia, yes, <laughs> we've had we the GSOW project has done quite a bit of, uh, of some writing. Here, here is the Wikipedia page for VOF in uh -huh. written in English. This is written by Andras. No, no, it was written by Leon. And I know Leon, I think uh, yes, that's yeah. a specialty doing the, the skeptical the organization. Group. And it's mm -hmm. also been written in Dutch, and it's mm -hmm. also been written in Norwegian. One of the Norwegian languages. There barely, are. barely anything for Norwegian. And mm -hmm. then here it is in Swedish. Yeah. Yeah. Be good. Right. There so there we go. All kinds. So we've been doing that. We've been doing some different Wikipedia pages. Anything we can to help out, we, we're trying to do. You know, it's it having a Wikipedia page boosts the whole the whole uh you know credit credibility of whatever organization that you were doing yeah you know whatever that is let me unshare so that's been really good we have also i wanted so before i talked about uh the esp and some of the things you're doing i have to share of course this photo this this famous photo so okay so bear with me a second people so I was speaking at um, 2014, I was going to be speaking at QED, which is amazing in Manchester, England. And I just arrived, got off, got out of the taxi. All my luggage was in the taxi and took off. I could, didn't take it out. <laughs> so I was like, oh shit, there went my purse, my wallet, my uh, passport, uh, my camera. Um, I had like some clothing and that was it. I left it in the taxi cab and it took off. And so people were trying to chase that down and get it taken care of. I got it a, a day later, but it was pretty stressful. But in the meantime, I show up in Manchester. I'm so excited to be there. And in one corner of my eye, here comes Andras Pinter. Hello, Susan, I'm one of your Wikipedia editors. It's so nice to meet you. And I'm like, oh, hello, Andras. Nice to meet you in person. The other here, here comes Pontus. Hello, Susan, we have known each other from the internet, um, no. I'm Pontus, and is that what it was? I no, I have my version of this because oh, I have. Oh, oh uh, we have right? a different version. And my son. Yeah, probably. I I probably we misremember both of us. You know how it is. I but have a witness. Sterling was with us, and he has a much younger memory. So he's yeah, like, okay. So I, I, said, I did. I did I'm approach. I'm hungry. You. Let's go to McDonald's, and yeah. let's go. And so I said, Pontus, this is Andras. Andras, this is Pontus, and we sat down, and I remember saying to you guys, let's solve all the world's problems while we're sitting at this table. We have everything. That is true, yes, and we, and we did. And we did, well, 
No, we didn't. And then we're trying. And then we got into the conference area. It was like a day or so ahead of time. And Jelena comes over. She says, "Hi, Susan. I'm one of your editors um, <laughs> in Russian." And the first time I met her, and I'm like, oh, hello. And we met her husband, Brad, who was there. Very nice. And we all are at the table. And and um, uh, Nathan Phelps was there. And, and oh, Jelena yes. was just so excited. Yeah. She's like, oh, my gosh. Phelps, oh, my yeah. gosh. I said, yeah. Well, I'll invite him over to the table. Nathan, hey, go over. And she's like, oh, my God, I'm Nathan Phelps. She was really <laughs> was great. So you guys, I introduced you. And I'm, I'm showing the picture as proof. And let's see how... Here's yep. a picture of us sitting at McDonald's. Well, it's you but, meeting for the very first time. That's true. With your McDonald's cups. And Andras yep. has this Kim Trill dot <laughs> right. HR. I guess it's the Hungarian version because that was a lot of fun. But okay, so let's hear what you hear because no, it, it's we're mostly it, we're getting it on, on video now. Yeah, no, it's I I agree with almost everything you're saying. But I just want to give my uh how I if I, because I did approach you, uh, and I was rather nervous because I what? was nobody. No, this was my first QED. I had not met anybody outside of of Sweden in, in skepticism, and I was not on the board of Swedish skeptics. So I was just a, a dude, right? A dude. And I wanted, <laughs> and but I did. You, know, I had met Marsh, Michael Marshall, mm -hmm. and and he he He's had convinced me. You have to go to QED because it's fantastic. And uh, so I did, and I realized I will not know anybody here, but it'll be full of people that I know of because I've heard of them from podcasts and, and mostly of podcasts and, and other ways. And I had said, okay, how do I, 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 how do I make friends here? Okay, I'll, I'll volunteer for the skeptic camp thing. So I, talk, I gave a talk, a 10 minute talk on and something. But at the end of it, I had a list of certain skeptical people that I referred to, and you were one of those people. And just uh, maybe it was 15 minutes before I was about to talk, I heard somebody say, oh, Susan Derbick is here. So, Susan Derbick, I'm going to mention her. Shit, maybe she won't like that. Maybe, uh, so so I, that's when I went up and introduced myself and say, Hi, are you Susan Gerbic? I just want to make sure that it's okay that I mention you on my last slide on the presentation I'm going to make. Oh, I so that's how I remember that. <laughs> I don't think I've told you how, exactly how what that was, worked. What was the slide about? It was about rebutter, which was. Oh, uh, yeah. uh, Unfortunately, it never took off, but it no, was a way a lot of, these of uh, yeah. yeah, it was an good initiative. Uh, it was a good idea that you would rate, or you would actually not rate web, uh, web pages, but you would tag them and uh, say this okay this web page is contradicted by the other yes, web page that i'm redirecting page. you to here Linking so you could together. yeah so you could connect the pro the the different versions of of the same thing uh and i tried to use it it was good but it it it's it didn't take off right it, it, if you just don't have enough people using it it's just yeah. not going to work web you, you have, is yeah. still one of my favorites it's kind of caught on I mean, millions of people use it i think it's still there but uh, oh, i use it all the time but i yeah. don't know if it's yeah. had the effect i get yeah. this a lot where people will come well not a lot but i've had a lot of different places contact me saying how can we do duplicate what you're doing with gsow i have this idea i have this software i have this plugin that i'm going to make that's going to change the world and i get that all the time and you know they've got it all figured out they got a really cool logo they've got a great yeah. idea um but when it gets down to it it's it, it's it's like they're trying to create another phenomenon like wikipedia or something which right very hard here that it exists at all wikipedia i mean that mm. shouldn't work at all but the people will say they'll say um you know i want to run it with users volunteers mm. i'm thinking well wh how are you going to do that you think they're going to go to some website, some random website somewhere and, and do it? Well, maybe they will. It's like, well, if they don't, then that just ruins everything. You can't have. Right, right. You can't, you can't. I, you I never know. a lot of bad news and, and they don't like to talk to me again. They, they kind of get like, but we've got it all figured out and we've got some funding from Google and we've got this. I'm like, yeah, but if people won't use it or put your plug in, 
into the you have to you have to reach a such a big audience to get it rolling so if if um, if tens of thousands of people do it then maybe it can happen maybe. and then and then you can get to a couple of million and then you're sort of getting in in there but as long as it's just a handful of people or a hundred even or even a thousand, thousand it's not even enough a thousand. as you yeah. said it's very strange that wikipedia works at all but maybe it's just because it came in so early so it was established absolutely it was uh, a when, storm yeah 2001 it was timing timing it just it just happened and it would not have it was a perfect storm of being able to um you know start it same with like facebook uh, twitter mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. it's hard to start another type of thing youtube mm -hmm. Right. kind of a perfect storm podcasting just mm -hmm. kind of started and mm -hmm. took off a little bit but mm -hmm. yeah i hear wikipedia is going to be a thing just like uh Facebook. <laughs> they keep telling me i should check yeah. it out <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 oh that's uh, you know we use that's wikipedia told. all the time so i wanted i wanted to uh talk about the podcast a little bit because i absolutely okay. or the esp mm -hmm. I fell behind for a while there, you know, with yeah. yeah, that happens. Yeah. Part of part of the problem is is when your routine is messed up, you know, I used to drive to work and then I stopped working. Mm -hmm. So the the drive is no longer there when I listen to the podcast or whatever. And you have these problems where, where things just interfere. So the website for uh the ESP, one of the things you have in here, I, I love this. Mm -hmm. I, I don't get to use it because I'm not traveling anymore, but this the, the calendar. Me, it's a calendar yeah. and this is yes. your baby right i do most of the updating or all of the updating but i i must say that it was um Andras idea it's and of course it's now it looks a little bit more empty than it usually does because of uh, the pandemic right if you go the back in time a little bit you can see that almost <laughs> and even and this is june i mean june back. is if if you go back to winter oh, oh. or so before uh, like what well, can't you go back? back machine Oh, yeah! I can't go back to me. What? The little arrows? There's no arrow. There's an arrow here for going forward in time, but there's no arrow to go back in time. I hate to no, tell but you can't. You can't go back in time, Susan. That it's just impossible. <laughs> Physics. Physics. Uh, let me see if I can show you another view here's, of here's, it. What it is is it is a calendar of talks, events, uh, conferences all over Europe. So if you kind of mouse over these, you can see that they're, they, you have everything in here. Here's um, Horacio, Horacio, Horacio in- Horacio, uh, I, I don't know, it's in Bulgaria. Yeah, in Romania with our friend down there, mm -hmm. and Sofia. But it gives you all the information, how to join, what time, uh, who's gonna be talking. Here's another one with, oh, this is me. That's you. <laughs> <laughs> This is me talking to Andras. That was in June second, huh? Wow, I yeah, didn't realize right. that. There you go. It's got all the information in here. So if you are interested in, and not if only if you live in, well, okay, pre-pandemic, when we could meet in human in person, pre-pandemic, if you were going to be not only if you were part of the Hungarian skeptics or the Swedish skeptics or the Romanian skeptics or whatever, and you wanted to keep an eye on what's going on, but I thought this was great for people who are traveling, who are uh, planning a business trip or a vacation somewhere. Maybe they'd be able to check out the calendar and, you know, go to a go to an event somewhere in Spain or or someplace. Yeah, that there you go. Look at December I, I, 2019. I, yeah right so if wow. you if you look here it's a sophia paris uh, paris paris maidstone cambridge plymouth Cologne, or that's cologne mm -hmm. sophia again nottingham vienna Uppsala, that's in sweden helsinki so uh, on one this is just one tuesday in the middle of the week there are five things going on that we know of i'm, I'm sure there were we, we miss some events sometimes but so uh, i think that's it we we see it more like um, an, uh, it, it is good if you want to travel, absolutely. But I don't think people look at this and say, okay, I think I'll go to Plymouth on the, on the, on the 26th. Because no, but if, you're, but if it, you have a business meeting in that area and you say, I wonder yes. what's going to be happening the right. month I'm in Plymouth, maybe but, there's but the other, catch. 
but the other reason is to to be an inspiration for this uh to to see that there is so much going on and we uh usually say as well if you don't see something here from your hometown why don't you start one see all of these people are just regular people just like yourself mm -hmm. they, with some initiative they contact the local venue they make a few phone calls they get together with some friends recommending and you can get you can do you can be ambitious and have proper lectures by professors and stuff uh, or you could just invite somebody to just give a, a be in a, in a conversation with somebody mm -hmm. or you don't have to have a host uh, or a guest at all you can just say this is a social event just meet me at the pub at eight o'clock we'll talk skepticism and have a few and pints. yeah that's how a lot of them start i have news for everybody out there we're all just regular people <laughs> we are yes we're her working we hard not to show it now. but because we've yeah. been involved for so long, but it, it is, we all just started out with, um, I have a Monterey County skeptics in uh, Monterey, California area mm -hmm. and where I'm at. And it's, it's totally social. We do a conference every year. That's, that's uh, maybe 75 people show up. It's the first part of January. And we have speakers that are mostly from the community and they give 20, 30 minute talks. We bring people in from outside the community. It's becoming more and more of a draw because the time of the year, in um, America to be able to come in January to a place where it's just mild weather. Mm. It, it's nice, you know, so people will come in for a vacation out there, but it's a good, a, idea. A good yeah. it's just regular people just having conversations and getting to know each other. Yeah. And very often you can, if you can get some contacts within, uh, if there's a local university or something, that's a very, oh, very good talk or, or yeah, because then they, they're full of people and to, that want to spread information about their research. They love to talk about their research. Mm -hmm. Many of them feel probably very neglected because they're doing the sitting in the, the, their labs and with their, mm -hmm. with their test tubes and nobody pays any attention to what they're doing. And, and this is a way for them to, to present what they're doing, get some feedback on to what do people really think about this? Because everything they're doing is, is interesting. If you, if you just sound, if you just listen to somebody talking about enthusiastically about some very small discovery or whatever it is, <laughs> it's very interesting to listen to. <coughs> Excuse me. Hmm? So that's, that's good. I recommend that. Uh, and, and you were saying about the skeptics movement, I asked for like six, five, six years ago, very few people had ever heard reason, had even had reason to her, have heard of me. Uh, but it is such a small organized, a small movement in, in, in one respect. And it's such an open, everybody's very open to be contacted and help. And uh, it's, it's great. So the social aspect is something i didn't expect actually when i really joined. No, well, no i didn't really that well, wasn't i wanted you're scientifically minded over there in sweden you had lots of people to talk to about these things yes and that's what i want i wanted Not to learn America. more <laughs> i wanted to learn more and uh, and it, i found friends all over the world and uh, it's great it is uh, some of the best friends i have are all you guys located all around the world i mm -hmm. it, it feels just comfortable here in america even though i'm in a little bubble of sorts here in california in next to the i'm near the ocean here the pacific ocean we we still don't atheism that discussion of uh atheism is not it's is kind of done where you kind of lower your voice if you're in a public place yeah and you talk about it like this and your family is probably still religious and or you know it's not it's not as public so so people who come to my organization a lot of them come because they've lost their religion they've you know they now realize they're atheists and they've or whatever reason they come in that's usually the god angles what comes to the monterey county skeptics that's where we get most of them and some of them are quite new at this idea of being able to speak about it and to like-minded people who also understand and it's funny some of the arguments they come in and they're like did you hear this one did you hear that one? we're like yeah we heard it about 15 years ago <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> to them it's a brand new thing the ability yeah. to have friendships with people or an intellectual discussion about um 
atheism and yeah. and religion and coming out of that it's but in your era, neck of the woods that's like old hat you know right, right. nobody discusses this atheism in in my i never heard about it because really because it's the default position most people are more or less i mean they're, they're, quite a few people go to church once in a while but they say they even apologize apologetically say well it's mostly for the social meeting and keep track of this and that but very few people advertise their religion uh, mm -hmm. at all in sweden it, uh, it, it's interesting i've heard it said many times that there could never be an atheist president in the united states i don't think we could have a religious prime minister an openly religious prime minister in in, in sweden I'm, I'm sure some of them have been slightly religious, but it's not something that's part of their public identity or something that it, you talk about at all. Wow, I'm just hearing the comparisons between yeah. our worlds are the opposite. It, it really is in a lot of ways completely opposite. Mm -hmm. I mean, we may have had some, we may have had a president that was an atheist, we just don't know, mm -hmm. clearly, you know, but it is that idea that we are we're so it's so ingrained here and i don't feel like it's going to be my lifetime that we're going to see where we become more and more like your your um you know the Scandinavian no, cultures it's hard when, to change when you travel which is one of the reasons why i think that america is so isolated most people are monolinguist monolinguist here um, hmm. well in my town no in my town most of us speak spanish and english mm -hmm. That's just because of the nature of the environment, but we're not where you're from and Europe, I should say, you know, the northern areas of Europe, you, most people speak some languages, other, you know, one or two or three languages and they travel. You could go to another culture like an hour away, two hour mm -hmm. train ride and you're in another country with a different culture, whereas here it's a long it's a long uh, uh, train ride to get to anything, right? You know, it, it, that is. I mean, we can go to Canada, which is kind of, kind of already America, sort of mm. America. We'd like to be in a lot of ways, but we're just <laughs> not culturally. We just don't travel like that. It, mm. You know, we're not aware of all these other ideas. And when you go to the Scandinavian countries, and Mark and I were walking around the the areas in Stockholm and in Denmark, it was fascinating. You see these beautiful churches that are there as historical monuments, but they're very, they're not really visited. People would well, tell no, me. No, not very. Hey, most hey. of them are still in use, but, but, but they are very empty, <laughs> even on Sundays. Uh, there is, there was a big, a little bit of a hubbub, of, I think it was eight years ago or something here in Malmö, where one of the central churches uh, and we have many of them in, in Malmö, but one of them were, what was the phrase? They, they, they stopped using it as a church, but they had to go through a certain um, ritual, which to me was so, I, let me, I can't remember what it was called. Uh, well, they they, they de-Christian it somehow. So I, in a way, went in there and told God that he doesn't belong here anymore and they're going to use it as a shopping mall instead. It, it, it's, it's, there, was, there was this there was a ritual where with a priest who went in and said some mumbo jumbo and then it was no longer a holy building never heard of that before that's very interesting never heard of that before either that's pretty fascinating so i want to make sure everybody knows about this calendar thing and mm -hmm. if you are if you're the type of person who does travel, maybe on vacation or for business or whatever, it would be really nice if they could check out. Right now, of course, we can all just talk to each other on Zoom. There's mm -hmm. lots of talks all over the place. And we put online events in the calendar as well. Yeah, so the online events are in there. And I, I think that that's fascinating because we're able to watch. I mean, if you're awake, obviously, we can, mm -hmm. we can watch the UK talks. Um, mm -hmm. There's a Skeptics in the Pub, the UK Skeptics every... Thursday, 11 o'clock, my time. They're yeah, it's, it's, it's 7 o'clock UK, UK time, yeah? UK PM. Time. That's great. I mean, I'm doing talks. Lots of people are doing talks. Um, it, it, in a way, now we're able to really get to know these other groups. And Absolutely. Other it's, and it's more, more international than, than that, because, of course, the, 
we find out you don't have to have a local professor giving a talk anymore. Uh, now I have to look, look up the name. I saw uh, yesterday, uh, Thursday, uh, there was a fascinating talk by a Brazilian skeptic and university uh, researcher. She talked about the situation of skepticism in Brazil right now. Yeah, I uh, And Bolsonaro. Natalia. Yeah, Natalia. That's, thank you. Do you know her full name? I, I'm drawing I a blank. I wouldn't pronounce yeah. it correctly, but she has spent, she, her and uh, her, her uh, significant others spent the night here at my house and they made me. Uh, really? Oh yeah, they spent, uh, they came up, she was doing a conference in San Francisco and she came down, it's a couple hours drive from San Francisco. She stayed in my guest room, her, her and her uh, um, Carlos, and they made me chocolate. And uh, we went to dinner, we went to the aquarium, and uh, I have a video up on, on YouTube of her making these little chocolate balls that are pure sin, just chocolate chocolate on top of chocolate. And she's in my <laughs> kitchen, she's making she didn't, she didn't talk about that last time. Yeah, sure. Her, wow. yeah, so her, name, her name is Natalia Pasternak. Pasternak. We've written her Wikipedia page in English and in mm -hmm. Portuguese as well as her organizations group. Yeah, she's great. Yeah. She's a world- Fascinate, Fascinating you. talk. Somebody very good, to watch. Talk, very good speaker. And of course, this is uh, still online, I'm sure. You could uh, oh, yeah. go and, 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 and see it. So uh, it's a very it, interesting talk. Go and look. It's scary. Talk about America being scary. I think Brazil might be a little more frightening right now. Mm, I, was, I, I was shocked, actually. I, I didn't realize how bad it was. Well, I've, I've been listening to her for a while. She's been doing some things. Um, the, uh, I wanted to also mention on the ESP, one of the things I've really enjoyed about your podcast is that it is really bringing people to understand that there are more people outside of the, the American po podcasters. Mm -hmm. People seem to know those names, you know, the SGU and, and so on, those, those names. And they think, oh, wow, that's American skepticism. And it's like, there's so many people out there who are doing things, who are active, who are in other countries that we may not have known before. But you interview them on your podcast every couple of weeks. Yeah. I think you do an interview. And I've always been amazed at the talent in Europe in the Best. countries and the talent the the scope of um passion they have the the problems that they encounter which sometimes are very different from america's and sometimes they're pretty much the same i mean you don't have necessarily the creation science issues that uh, america has but we don't have the homeopathy issues that that uh are happening in like germany germany yeah yeah so oh. I, I i love it uh the if anybody gets a chance and wants to sit and listen to um, new voices with new accents in mm -hmm. other countries <laughs> and what they're experiencing, uh, go through the go through the channel of the ESP's past past interviews. And I, yeah, I think I think we must have interviewed like uh, 60, 70 people or eighty. I don't know. It, it, it's a lot. There's a lot of people that we have had on, and we we continue to to bring new people on. Because, as you say, there are so many people out there doing so much work, and and you you don't hear about them so much because not in America not, we don't no no not 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 even here unless we bring them on an a, a, an English speaking podcast mm -hmm. because I'm I'm you know Czech Republic is just so big and Poland is just so big and if if you do things in languages that are not English to be honest then, then uh, the rest of the world won't hear about it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's been great. And we've been able to use the interviews that you're doing to write Wikipedia pages for these people. I mean, we can't use your interview necessarily to write for, to prove notability for, for somebody to write a Wikipedia page. So an interview does not equate a Wikipedia mm -hmm. page, but we're able to, well, first off, it brings it to the GSOW's attention the Wikipedia mm -hmm. project, we're able to go, oh, this is somebody I haven't heard of before. What an interesting project or what an interesting right. uh, activity these people are doing in this country. And we can look and see if there might be enough information to be able to write a Wikipedia page. And we have, or we are able to use the interviews you're doing to fill in um, a Wikipedia page that might be a stub, you know, not well, well done. And um, so, you know, we're using your, your um your Good. podcast is a resource 
Good. I, I love that too. It, and I think that we need to get over this idea that America, I mean, that skepticism is, you know, the English speaking world, just because you have Australia and you have uh, New Zealand yeah. and the UK and you have America, there's a lot yeah. more going on. And there's a lot more interesting people out there that we need to know. And with the, with the, this coronavirus, which has been horrible and devastating, has had a side effect of allowing us to, forcing us to go out of our comfort zone and yeah. meet people that are outside of our normal world via Zoom and, and lectures and conference, um, conferences we couldn't attend. Maybe now we can watch to some extent. Yeah. right. You guys just had a, a conference. Uh, uh, what did you guys just do online just recently? You were saying that you were organized oh. a, a Swedish, was it like right. a- we had We had the annual meeting of the, the Swedish skeptics, the BOF, the VOF uh, organization, because we have in our statutes that we need to do it before end of June every year. It's, it, there's no provision for pandemics <laughs> in our, our rules that we wasn't foreseen by the founders of the organization. So uh, we first had scheduled uh, a, a normal meeting, uh, a weekend really that we usually do. And it was supposed to be in the city of Uppsala. But uh, when there was, you know, like it was six, eight weeks before we realized this is not going to happen. So we, we postponed it to the uh, end of June because that was the longest we could do hoping that we would be able to meet in, in person, knowing that if that doesn't work, we'll have to invent some sort of online uh, thing. And uh, we did uh, eventually go online and we had, uh, we did uh, the, the boring stuff or, or the mandatory stuff like electing a new board and, and, and stuff uh, via Zoom very highly controlled with some pre-meetings making sure that everybody knew how to do it we had a, we invented a way of doing the uh, 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 voting etc and uh, how do we make sure that we don't get zoom bombed and stuff like that and then we had after that we had uh, st we streamed three live uh, things uh, over twitch but just Four days before, we were supposed to use something called Lightstream, which we had tested for the for the the streaming event mm -hmm. and for the, uh, the presentations afterwards. And uh, we tested it, and it worked. And then four days before, we realized it's too buggy. It, it keeps hanging. It keeps it doesn't work. So what do we do? And uh, then of course, again, the international skeptics movement came to the rescue because I contacted the guys over in, in the UK because they had now done that every Thursday for quite a few weeks. So, what are you using? I thought you were using Lightstream, but it always crashes. Yeah, yeah, we threw that out. We're using this other system instead. Okay, good. So I, I spent a couple of hours on that and yeah, it seems to be working. And then I had to contact the, the, the people who are going to present. So you're going to do it differently. And did you actually have to call me via Skype? And then I link it to this other thing. And then we'll feed that to, to, to um, Twitch. And then somebody came back. So I cannot get Skype to work on my, my machine. Can I use Zoom instead? I said, Zoom? Well, maybe. Then we had to invent another way of doing that. So it was a stressful um, day for me because of somehow I ended up doing all of the all of the technical work, which was a mistake, I should, of course. you just that somebody. kind of guy. I became so interested in how to do this, and I wanted to learn, and, and suddenly I was running a lot of stuff at the same time. But it worked out well uh, in the end. I should have been looking at Facebook. Sorry, you guys, but there's been people commenting as we've been going through oh. our discussion, but I was so interested in what we were talking about. I forgot. Yeah, to yeah, yeah. Oh, people are still listening. I thought they were gone now. So. No, no, of course. And this will go on to YouTube for people to, who, who miss part of it and don't want to watch it on Facebook for whatever reason. But let, let me give you some of the comments here. Andras okay. said, Andras said, at one time there were so many events in the calendar that I had to turn it off in my calendar app. Remember yeah. those days when you had, there was so much going on yes. that we, yeah, I, I, I think I'm going to have a completely new appreciation of conferences and meetings and 
so on. And I do want to talk about conferences in just a second, but let's go through mm -hmm. these policies. Paula Lauterbach said, Paula said, it's the schools. We're talking about uh, learning languages is that mm -hmm. in America, you're not really offered a foreign language class until you're in ninth grade, which is almost too, too late. late learning a language, yeah. you learn a language when you're young. And yeah. Frida, your, your daughter said, uh, this is really interesting. I didn't know this. One of the reasons Swedes, Swedes learn English so well is that we only dub children's films. That's so right. once you learn to read properly, you're expected to get by with subtitles, which of course is exhausting. So you quickly learn English and it's a good way to passively learn a foreign language. That's it is a great way of learning a, a new I language because you, you, on, you don't only get the, 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 the words, but you get the pronunciation as well. So you, and you get the slang and you get this, this, the naughty words that you're not supposed <laughs> to, to learn and they don't teach you in school. When I was learning Spanish, and again, I learned it when I was older, and it's, it's slipping by me now. I'm quickly losing my Spanish, and it's been really, really sad. It's something I'm sad about, and I keep saying I'm going to pick it back up again. And um, But I'm really interacting with so few people in public mm -hmm. at all, none. But um, telenovelas, like a, a, to watch a, something on TV, a telenovela would be like a soap opera. You know, mm -hmm. with a lot of drama where she's like, oh, no, he's cheating on you. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whole, you don't have to really understand all the words to get what is going on. And you, it helps you pick up the vocabulary and, the, as mm -hmm. you say, swear words and words you wouldn't learn necessarily in a class, more conversational. Yeah. Um, Janice Boynton, who is here with us, um, has was talking about the churches that you were talking about, how mm -hmm. you go in and the priest would do something. She says it happens in defunct churches in the United States. A Catholic priest goes in, does some sort of ceremony and desanctifies the place. Desanctified, that's the word I was uh, looking for. Desanctified, yeah. <laughs> okay. I guess it's like saying, it's okay for bad things to happen here now. The church does no, yeah. no longer sanctify. I, I always thought about it like a, anymore. like like a sort of exorcism for church. You 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 exorcise God out of the building. You're not welcome here anymore. We're gonna sell. Get out! Get out! Yep. You've been fired! Fired! Yep. Fired! You should do that more often. <laughs> well, not for a while, but it might. So I want to talk to you about conferences because I right. adore conferences. I I love the Zoom. I love mm -hmm. all the Zoom stuff. Uh, oh, and Linda, Linda Rosa has just written something in a language that I don't know what it says. Oh. I'm going to see the translation. Uh, come on now. It doesn't want to come up. Darn it. Track for alt du practir med. It's something about practicing. Yeah, something. I'll have to check that out a little bit. That sounds almost like she Swedish. Speaks, she speaks, well, she's from um, Wisconsin. Oh. Which is a state in Cal uh, California, state in the United States that does have um, a high concentration of Scandinavians. So I would not be shocked if she did. She learned. Uh, she okay, no, it says I, I'm listening. Thanks for thanks for talking to Susan Gerbic. Oh, check her out. Yeah, yeah. You're welcome. She That's she great. called me. Huh? <laughs> so some people do speak more than one language in America, but it is not as common as it is in other countries so you know but going back to the conferences yes i'm a huge advocate for conferences absolutely a huge advocate for getting out of your comfort zone a little bit and going mm -hmm. and actually go to a place where you don't know anybody um, being actively involved in um uh, uh the communities there sitting down with people even if it's not one of the speakers but sitting down in the audience and looking at the person next to you and saying you know hi how you doing and you know what brings you here or um you know just did you get you know whenever the lecture is going on and there's a little bit of a break you can say what did you think of that and mm -hmm. it just engaging and then maybe going and having something to eat afterwards a cup of coffee a beer sitting down at mcdonald's whatever <laughs> just getting to know people and i i feel the conferences are so much more important than the than the lecture itself lectures are great they're fine mm -hmm. But, you can but it's one way. Yeah, lectures are one way, and and 
and also I, I think if we talk about especially QED, which is I haven't been to all that many different Explain conferences. Explain QED because a lot of people don't. Yeah, know. okay. That's QED is it's supposed to happen every year in Manchester, uh, brought on like, by the Merseyside skeptics and the Greater Manchester skeptics, and and the Merseyside skeptics are known also for skeptics with a K, which is a great podcast to listen to. Uh, so they uh, have I. They are wonderful in putting on the best conference you can ever imagine. And one of the rules that they have for, they have, they have rules for the speakers as well. And say, there will be no green room. You, if you accept to come to our conference, you are, uh, um, you are expected to mingle with everybody. You will be at the bar. You will, there will be a gala dinner and we will, there will not be a separate thing just for you. You will be one of the, the participants only. I didn't know that. And, and, and that's great. Because I didn't know that. And I was one of the speakers. Oh, I, didn't they I, tell you? It was, they didn't have to tell you because that's in your nature anyway. It's my nature to not go hang out in a green room. I might go get maybe some free food or something, but yeah, yeah. I might mm -hmm. sneak in there to get a free food or, or have a chance to tie my shoes or something where, where I'm, you know, have a quiet moment, but yeah that's but, but my nature, yeah. and even so that's very exciting you get to meet people that you've only heard of or you've uh, you've heard on on podcasts or you've heard of in other ways or people you haven't heard on but of but apparently are very uh, famous anyway because you've just missed them uh so that's good and you get to meet them and you get to discuss dessert with them or what kind of beer do you like uh but also you get to meet all the other participants so some people say we go to QED not so much for the famous people, but to just meet everybody else because it's so much fun. That's why I go. So, I love yeah, it. Yeah. I love yeah. all, well, QED I haven't been able to go to except for the one time. The one of the other things about QED, some people adore, and I'm not sure I adore it at all, is that they run tracks. So, yes. you, so you can't- It's a curse. Our conference, you have a podcast track, you have a speaker track, you have a panel track, you have, I think, movies. So, so, you, so there's always something to do, but you've got- You, you have you, to choose. You, you have to choose and you can't go back the next year and watch it, you know, and, and see it again because next year it'll be totally different talks. Yeah. So you're choosing and I, I, what I found was difficult is getting from one place to the other. There's so many human beings to get past, getting to that location and then finding a seat. Um, and then getting over to the other one, you almost have to leave early from one talk you're in to get to the other one on the other side and then try to get in there. And, yeah. and it almost cuts off your time in the conference. And I, I don't like it. To be honest. <laughs> Not that the QED people care what I think, but I, I, I really don't like missing so much. But I no, guess I that's the way they do it. Yeah, and I, but I, I like it. I, I, I know it's a curse, and I, I also feel frustrated. Some, you know, in the morning, and you've looked at this program for weeks in advance. But in the mornings, so, do I want to get to the panel debate, or do I want to hear that person speak? And do I want to? And, and you still, and then in the last minute, you have to make a choice. And, and the good thing is, I've never made a bad choice, oh, which means that's all true. of them have always been good. And uh, I like the idea that skepticism or the conference is so big that you cannot take in all of it. Uh, that, to me, sends a message that is great in a way. Well, if it was all recorded and released, that might be mm. different. So then you feel like if you did miss something, then you could have watch it later. But I don't think they record everything. Do they? No. Uh, well, the podcast sessions, obviously, they do. Uh, I'm not sure. It's, it, it, I think some of them are filmed i'm not sure i'm not sure yeah it's just to me it feels like i've, I've been missing same with dragon con um they do mm -hmm. the same thing where you have so many tracks going on and just getting from place a to place b is hard and then like you said you you sit down you meet somebody new and they're like i'm going to go to this track i'm going to go listen to this and you're like you know you just sold me on that i didn't hadn't even thought about that now i'm considering going to do that now and i've met this interesting person to go with and so now that just ruins all your other, <laughs> and then yeah. speakers will come up to you and go, Pontus, you're going to be in my talk, right? You're like, oh no, I was planning on going to somebody else's talk. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait, you're not going to be in my talk? Give me a break. You're going to my talk. No, but I was going to go. I told, 
I, I, I just can't see it. I, I would rather see QED go on for three more days. For a week or two, yes. Yeah, and mm. then get everybody in as a regular check. But I think that that would be insane. They stopped in 2019. They decided not to do a conference in 2019 because they needed a break, a well-earned break, obviously. Yeah. They had done six or seven years in a row, and they needed a break. It's all done by volunteers. Nobody gets paid. Everybody has day job. It's it's terrible work, but and then two years of COVID, and they got another year break. Yes. <laughs> so now we will have to go another year without a QED, uh, and that is tough. Once you've started to go to those, you you expect yeah. you need your QED fix. Well, I, I I attend conferences all over the world, and they're all this kind of same idea: is that you you go mm -hmm. in early. I advise anybody listening. Okay. All right, everybody listening, so take pull out a piece of paper and write this down, especially if you're going to a conference in a location like Las Vegas uh, for SciCon. And I've done 14 in a row conferences in Vegas. First, it was an amazing meeting, and then it's now been SciCon, which uh, are phenomenal. And they're one track. <laughs> Just wow. Everybody goes to the same lecture all the time. I love that. But what happens is, is that people will, in a, a destination like Vegas, people will come in with their spouse, significant other, and they'll say, I'm going to attend this conference. And, you know, the other one's like, I'm not really all that interested. And they're going to go off to a show or see friends or, you know, they're going to go off on their own in Vegas. And they expect that after the lecture, you're going to go back with your spouse or your significant other, and you're going to go and hang out with them at some something yeah but that's not how it works it doesn't it doesn't happen that way at all the lecture is only a part of the conference experience when you go you're as i said you're meeting other people um, especially if you have some niche you know like in the gsow project we get people from all over the world who come in who are my editors and they're meeting each other for the first time and hanging out it's like you get up in the morning you go out to breakfast together you go to the conference the whole day, hanging out, breakfast, lunch, breaks, everything, and then you go out for dinner, and then you go out after the dinner, and you're hanging out in places. There's there's no downtime. I mean, you get a little bit of sleep. So I tell everybody to go early, go to the conference a day, at least early, especially if you have any kind of jet lag, mm -hmm. at least a day over. And there's always some sort of social group, some Facebook group or, or whatever that is kind of arranging things they're like hey anybody arriving early let's Some go pre-event yes um, official yeah or we're going to hang out or we're going to have dinner or we're going to go to yeah like a show in vegas we go see Penn and teller or maybe a psychic or something so you could arrange that ahead of time and you could do it in a lot of social ways especially in these facebook groups by saying i'm arriving at six o'clock on on this day anybody else arriving around my time and people will just They'll say, hey, I'm arriving about 15 minutes before you. Let's share a cab. And that's already, that starts your friendship with somebody to hang out with, somebody to know. And then you just kind of follow through. And then also I tell everybody to stay a day later. So in the case of PsyCon, it's over about 3 o'clock on a Sunday. I tell them, don't leave until noon on the on the Monday because you want to you have yeah, time. No, I, I fully agree. That's what I do as and well. go and have breakfast with everybody Get the full experience yeah. and then leave like around one or two o'clock you know take a flight out i know it's a pain and i know you're losing a day of work and you're out of your comfort zone but that's really how to experience these conferences right yes yeah. let's have them back Draw yourself soon. In. <laughs> yeah let's have those uh, conference conferences going soon again i really am missing them i think that's why yeah I'm me too so much. And it's so sad i'm just going to be doing i've missed um I was going to be in Aspen, uh, Aspen, call, um, Aspen you know, uh, think tank yeah, to, in uh, Italy. In Italy, it was in Rome. Yeah. That was going to be amazing. That was March, and then I was going to be doing. I won an award from the Washington D.C. Skeptics, and they were oh. flying me out there to give me a talk. I was going to give a talk, and they were going to have a dinner for me and award me an award, the mm -hmm. Philip Klaus Award that James Randi has won, and and uh, so many better people than I have and that was canceled and then I was going to go over to New York and go over to the Center for Inquiry and give a talk there that's canceled and then I was going to go 
Yeah. Our, our local group in, in uh, Berkeley, the Eugenie Scott Berry, Skeptic, Sacramento Skeptics, had a conference. I was going to be speaking with at the same conference. I was going to be on stage where Mary Roach, the science writer, and Jennifer Gunther was going to be. Mm -hmm. And Ross Blotcher from, oh no, Ross. From, and yeah. They're all, that was canceled. Yeah. That was June. And uh, Thomas Westbrook from Holy Kool-Aid uh, YouTube videos. Gone. That was June. And then I was going to Calgary, Calgary, Canada, for a first conference this group is having. It's called We Can Reason. That was in June. It's been moved to next May, and we're not even sure that's going to happen. Mm. I tell you, Pontus, my year was... Yeah, now it's tough. I'm just so sad. looking. I'm really sad. So let me see if there's any more other... Yeah, I was just looking. I was getting... Nothing, nothing there. Nothing really no. Um, I guess Linda just says she doesn't know Swedish. She just yes, yeah. She made a good uh, translation there somehow. Very good. Was well, there anything else that you'd like to add? And um, if not, I guess no, I, I don't think so. I think we've had a had a long conversation. It was great of you to call me uh, to have a little uh, distance. I, I want to say hello. For, you have to say hello from uh, oh Pope, Pope Francis. Pope Why did Francis you says hello. That? I was going to mention that. So Pontus yeah. has a segment on the ESP called Poking the Pope. <laughs> Look at you get a bobble. And there he is. Yeah, yeah. We I sit there and discuss every day him and my, and he only shakes his head. And I, I uh, yeah, we don't agree very well. I, so he has a segment, a running segment about what's <laughs> going on in the papacy. And yeah. it is really interesting because I don't have any clue what's happening in the papacy. And to hear the different uh, <laughs> the no, stories that you find. Quite, I think, you know. I, you I never run out of stories, huh? Until I started to look into this, I didn't realize what an interesting time this is for the, for the Vatican and for the Catholic Church. Because this guy here, uh, I, I usually say a lot of bad things about him because I think he's a misogynist and a hypocrite and whatever, but he is a very interesting character and he's the most progressive pope, I think, ever. At least in charismatic in too. Yeah, sorry. Charismatic. Charismatic. Yeah, many of them have been charismatic. I think that maybe is a prerequisite to get the job. But uh, this is he is um, he's interesting, and he has there's a lot of intrigues. Even from an out from the outside, you can see that there are things going on behind the curtains there, and not everybody in the in the church is very happy with how he changes things around and uh, uh, his view on money is very different for one thing mm -hmm. he's a jesuit so he believes in a poor church for the poor uh, and uh, some of these bishops there are really used to having a lot of money really to, pushing to, the envelope, isn't yeah, yeah 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 the last so, uh, the last esp that i have not finished um, mm -hmm. i'm part way through i was listening to it at the grocery store yesterday yeah. And you were talking, and it was a brilliant point you made about how this current pope, well, we have two current popes. <laughs> yeah, well, we have, we have one pope emeritus, a retired pope, Benedict XVI. That doesn't make any sense at all. No. But <laughs> the current pope, he had a statement about how we should respect women's bodies. We should... Uh, respect women and you know if if I had heard that it would have just gone right over my head like uh-huh uh -huh. but you made a really interesting statement about that could you could you clarify that because I think that that's really important yes so it was apropos the uh, there was a lot, lengthy name of it there was a day f to to highlight how pe how women get abused as part of uh, warfare and, and other things which is a very important thing to to uh, to talk about, and it's a UN, the, the UN has uh, instated it, but uh, I'm, I'm pointing to him here. So, so <laughs> Francis, Francis, he thought he had to say something about it. And he said, it's very important how we uh, treat women's bodies and how, and how women are, uh, how women want to be, what did he say? Anyway, he made a statement very much sounding like, when he said we, he did not include women in the human race. He, he talks about women, he talks about himself and the men as the people who have to make sure 
that these lesser worth women are not getting hurt. And I'm glad he says that they shouldn't get hurt, but it's so condescending. It's so condescending. For another and, he said. Uh, yeah. And I made another reflection, which I made at the time when I read it. I've never heard him say the word we in a way that includes uh, women. When he talks about we, it's always we in the church, and we know they're all men, and we have to take responsibility, and we have to blah, blah, blah. He, women doesn't count. That was really interesting. And like I said, I don't think I would have caught that except that you broke that down on the podcast. And I thought I was, at, I was at the uh, CVS buying um, in the houseware department. I know exactly where I was whenever you were talking about that. And I stopped, and I said, that is really interesting. He does that. You know, when you were saying what he was, you were reading it out, what he was saying. And I thought, you're absolutely right. He isn't including women in that statement. Mm -hmm. It's like, we're not even, we're like a, another species and not yeah yeah not even worth mentioning as as a part of, as an he i'm sure he all. doesn't realize i don't oh, she, i'm sure he doesn't realize it is his own filter that's how he looks at the world um and i think he means well i think he thinks he said something good i think a lot of people who listen to it also uh, felt oh, it was nice it was right yeah well said but if you really try to get a glimpse of how he thinks he is not um, all there when it comes to mm -hmm. Andras a, lot of, had a, lot, good, a lot of issues mm. yeah well yeah well, Andras had a good comment afterwards he was saying that um oh, he was saying that he thought that how how the how he approached that how he was how he was saying that um uh, you know, women should be involved in it as well, that, oh, oh, that they weren't, he, he's, he's confused why somebody like a celibate, supposedly celibate, mm -hmm. man who has never married, never fathered children that we know of, yeah. I know of, yeah. how, why do they give relationship advice? Why are they talking yeah. about how to raise your children, talking about the struggles they don't talk about the struggles of, of a mother, you know, and, and all the struggles we have, but yet they're fine with giving relationship advice. And yeah, just and in, in many, in many you think about it, it's like, with you know, it, if you're part of the Catholic church, if you have problems within your marriage, you go to your Catholic priest and try to, you know, get help. And that guy doesn't know anything about families. He has never been married. Uh, and uh, at least, and as you said, never supposedly have had any kind of relation like that. So what would they know? But but the Francis has at one at least one occasion. I know he did uh, uh, give general marriage advice, and uh, marriage is a struggle, and both parties need to work hard to make it work. So how do you know? How do you know? You just this is making general, it up. Just I could have asked my cat. You were yeah. doing the same yeah. thing. Just get along. You guys are there in the house together. You're going to have to find a way of getting along. And and Kevin asks if we should if if there's a, that if the Pope would say that we should ever if you could talk to him and say hey so any chance we're going to have a woman Pope? Mm. No, no, that that would be an interesting question to put to him. Yeah, I'd, I'd had, like to hear his answer. Yes, I'll try to get out of that. <laughs> Yeah, well, now, so you probably have heard the story, and I'm going to tell it again, that mm -hmm. we're in 2017, Andras and Mark and I nearly met the Pope, just recently. Yes, right. We were in, a, we were, we were in Cesena, Italy, and we were, it was a conference for the Chicap, the, the Italian skeptics at a conference, and I was going to be doing a panel with, with them, and it was really great. It's a very small town, and we were in a hotel over you know so far and to get to the conference we had to walk through a lot of small streets little cobblestone streets and so on and the pope came because it was like the 400th anniversary of some famous person in the town and we didn't know and the conference didn't know that the pope was arranging to come to the town when they scheduled their conference on this day because it just ate up all the parking and it ate up it was it was a problem because you know having a pope in town so he he showed up and it was my talk 
I was going to be on this panel at 10 in the morning and the Pope was speaking from eight in the morning till 10. And he was like maybe a block or two away from where we were. And so to get to, from our hotel to the venue where we were having our conference, you had to go through these streets that were lined with people waiting to hear from the Pope. And they had these huge screen TVs everywhere so that, so that people could watch him on this live screen. And there was music, the hymns playing over and over, and there was security everywhere. And it was, it was fascinating to walk through all these people and Mark and Mark Edward and Andras and I are just like, wow, you know, it wasn't as many people as I would have thought, just to say. It was right. not as crowded as I would have thought. It was crowded, but it was not as crowded as I would have thought for having a Pope in your small town. That's and so you're walking along and, and Andras had a, had a pass that said press. So he was press because of the podcast for the mm -hmm. conference. So he's wearing this pass and we're trying to get through these, these areas to get on the other side. And the police were stopped us and they're like, where are you going? And Andras says, we need to get over to, to this conference. We need to get over here. And they're like, but the father is speaking over here. You're pressed. Why are you going that way when he's over here? And we're like, Couldn't we're understand not going to, to see the Pope. And they were just like, what? That's a good, that's a good statement. So we have better things to do yeah, than listening to things. Pope Francis. Yeah. So we were trying to get, <laughs> so we did get to our conference and they didn't open the doors until the Pope was finished. And I don't know if it was because there were people would be wandering in or whatever that were, I don't know what the reason was, but they had this huge hmm. screen right out in front of our venue. I mean, like right there. And so we're all standing out in front of the venue watching the Pope on this huge screen with all these people stopped in their tracks that were, you know, out riding their bikes or taking a walk or people with their babies in strollers. And they're all watching this Pope speaking in Italian and Andras is translating a little bit for us. And so I was saying, I'm reserving a seat at my panel right in the front. That's for him, you know, because he was ending his talk at 10, right before 10. I thought maybe he'll walk. He can make it. Yeah, he could come over and he could sit and he could listen to us do a, pa a panel discussion. And I was right there in the front. Nobody would have bothered him. I'm sure it would have been mm -hmm. great. Maybe he could slip on some other clothes that we didn't recognize him in his little white out gown and hat. And people behind him might have been upset because he'd be blocking. He doesn't him. actually wear that hat. No, that's interesting. He makes a point of not using that. He has only a very flat white. Oh yeah, he was a little cat. like an upside down plate. <laughs> uh, he wouldn't be blocking anybody's view. That would be nice. I, no, I, oh, well, he, yeah. he didn't no, show up. His, he, didn't he didn't show up. Oh, sure. No, you know, maybe saying, next time. And I said, yeah. you know, we were saving him a seat, but he he got in his little helicopter and they flew him away. But so that was my chance. You know, he had his chance to come and hang out. It was his me. chance. It was his chance. That's right. He blew it. I bet you he's talking about that now. Going, you know. <laughs> that I hear Next that time I'll go person. for the science conference. She's really nice. She's very yeah. sociable. Maybe we could have had a yeah. shared a meal over at McDonald's or something. <laughs> <laughs> you could convince him to start a podcast. There's time. There's yeah. time. Maybe he'll go on the ESP. Uh, yes. He, does he, he speak he, English? He does. I am sure he does. He speaks a lot of languages. So there you go. I, I, I spe he speaks all the Romans, Romance languages like Spain, Spanish, it, it, Italian, uh, f French. Does he speak? Maybe. I'm sure he does a little bit. Latin, of course, he speaks. And uh, I'm sure he speaks English as well. Well, the, there's an open invitation to be on the ESP, I'm sure. Is that all right? Yeah. Yes. Uh, so, but in the meantime, we'll just have to do with this little guy. <laughs> I love it. All right, Andras. I mean, Andras. I just called you Andras. Yep. I'm sorry. Okay, Pontus. No worries. No worries. I don't know. I just slip of the tongue. Yep. All right, Pontus. Paka paka. Yeah, that's Jelena's uh, yeah, I goodbye that. phrase. Paka paka. Yeah. So it was great seeing you. I put these talks on to introduce people to my world of friends. And I have such interesting friends. But I'm actually kind of doing this because I want to be able to catch up with people. <laughs> I, I think it's a great everybody. thing. I think it's a great idea. And uh, it was a pleasure it's to be here. kind of talk. It's not just yeah. a normal you lecturing or just like, so tell me this, tell me that. It's like, 
Yeah. Tell me the good stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, it's great to have Joe a... Rogan, but it's, you know. Yeah. Anyway, so this will be on the uh, YouTube here real soon. And um, if anybody has, uh, you know, I'll put the ESP's website as well as VOF's website in the show notes. And if there's anything else, uh, please, you know, maybe we'll do these again. Really All right. Good. Hopefully we'll have time where we'll be able to see each other in person real soon. Oh, soon. Yes, we should do that. All right. Bye. All right. Bye, Cheers, everybody. Bye-bye.